Someone sent me a message about a month ago and said they'd got one of these uh, aquarium lights for their fish tank and they put it in and all was, you know, well and it lit up and then all their fish just died. And you're thinking, oh, I think this merits further investigation. So I've bought one and I'm glad to say that they do them in our favourite colour, pink, pink and dangerous things. And this is called the fish friend, although in that case it might not necessarily be that friendly. And this particular one came from... Tom Top, Tom Top understroke W, colourful bubble, submersible, light air, curtain, bubble, stone, etc, blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't recommend buying one of these. I wouldn't recommend putting it in your fish tank. Let us investigate this a bit further. So it comes with this little power supply and it says, um, fish friend, consistent power supply, misspelt. Um, input AC 100 to 240 volts AC uh, 50 to 60 hertz Output DC 12 volts 500 milliamps CE double insulated etc Oh recyclable and yeah the wee home whatever that means It's like yeah invasion of your house type logo And you plug it in and <clears throat> I've not got a air pump to connect I've not got a fish tank to connect it to But uh, normally you'd connect a uh, hose onto this with an air pump and bubbles would come out this air stone in the middle and the LEDs would then illuminate that and there are the sort of directional LEDs with the lens in the front as you can see from the slide sparkle here and these are colour changing LEDs they're the ones that automatically cycle slowly through red, green and blue but they're not sort of synchronised anyway each LED is just doing its own thing so you'll see them all just gradually moving out of sync so far so good so um, let's start our analysis and for the analysis, I'm going to have to bring in our old friend, the rather dramatic light bulb continuity tester to the mains. Because if I unplug this and uh, get this connector apart, plug this in here, and then I shove this into... Uh, well, I'm going to have to shove this so I don't trip the RCD for the house. I'm going to have to shove this down into the neutral. Ugh. And then poke it in here. Yeah, that's that's the mains coming through that. That suggests that this is a capacitive dropper. Shall we investigate this further? I think we shall. So this thing has a little label. I, I, I quite like the label. Just the fact it says double insulated and then it just sticks mains out is just absolutely delightful. So let's uh, see if I can... Uh, I'll use this spudger. Spudger to get this label off. This uh, this is hinting at why this did actually kill all the fish. Now, fish are sensitive to electricity in the first place. But mains is definitely, a, you know, going to quite a lot of electricity, really. Uh, so let's see if I can get this label off. And there's the little screw. I'm so excited about what's inside here. It's almost certainly the capacitive dropper. Certainly for that sort of uh, leakage. Oop. I can see a big capacitor. It's not one to come apart. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And focus. So, yeah. Big fat capacitor. Bridge rectifier. This is basically like an LED lamp power supply in here. Um, I shall, uh, at the end, I'll just do a reverse engineer in this. So, um, yeah, let's go back down to here. Uh, and I'll just use this little cheat card to focus. And let's take a look at this now. So this thing has a sort of base that's loose, no screws. So you just pop it off. And initially it looks, well, you know, it's kind of okay because it's all potted in with hard resin in there. But then you see that the wire itself is, you know, it's not bare wire, but the actual, the cable is stripped before it goes into the resin, which means that, well, aside from the fact this cable is probably not rated at mains voltage, um, it means that there's various modes of failure that the water could have become live. The biggest suspect looking at this one is that maybe the wire was nicked when they stripped it. And uh, because the, the sheath, the black sheath of the wire stops before it goes into the the, re the resin, the black resin, the potting compound, it could be there was a little bit of exposed copper there on the wires. The other possibility is that, you know, the potting compound had air bubbles or something in it that somehow water wicked down the side of an LED and made connection with, the, with whatever, you know, was live. 
I'm kind of tempted to try and squeeze this out. I don't think I'm going to get it out because it's it's pretty much trapped in by the sort of pipe here. Um, so that's ultimately what's happened there. This thing, this power supply isn't isolated in any way. It's just a mains voltage power supply. And, you know, I suppose lots of people probably have these in their aquarium and it's working fine. They don't realise that effectively this little black cable is live at mains voltage. And because this, you know, it, it depends on the quality of the manufacturer of this bit, whether that will then come in contact with the water. And that must have happened. It must have, there must have been something in the tank that was referenced ground um, uh, or even just the metal frame of it. Uh, and this made the water live, created the voltage gradient and killed the fish. So I'm just going to pause momentarily and uh, reverse engineer this. Notepad, I don't really need to pause to draw this out. It is just a classic capacitive dropper. So here we get the mains come in. Uh, AC in. And it's going through the classic capacitor. In this case, they're using a uh, 334, which means three, uh, three and four zeros. So that's uh, 330 nanofarad, because that would be 330,000 picofarad. So that's 330 nanofarad. 330 nanofarad at 400 volts. Very typical of this arrangement. Uh, that makes me think those LEDs are all in series. But you know what? After this, I've drawn this out. I'll plug this in and just probe the circuit board, and we'll see what voltage we're getting across the LED string. There is a resistor across the uh, the discharge resistor, the classic discharge resistor, to stop you getting a zing off the pins of the plug when you unplug it. And the colour code of that is yellow, violet, black, orange. So that's four seven zero, and the three. The orange means three zeros, so that's 470k, so that's 470k. And then we have the bridge rectifier, which I'll just cheat and draw a box. And In this case, it's actually four separate diodes. I should mention that uh, the actual arrangement of the bridge rectifier is like this. It's always worth mentioning it. It's uh, basically a square of diodes where all the diodes point towards... Uh, the positive. So in this this case, they're all pointing towards that end. That would be the positive. This end would be negative, and the sides with a, a diode in our direction would be the AC input. And all it does, it acts like gates because the diodes only let current flow in one direction. Um, when neutral is positive with respect to uh, live, the current will flow through that diode positive and vice versa. When the other goes positive, it will flow uh, through this diode. And basically, it just it's a very simple gating system that converts AC to, to DC. So what we've got here is we've got the other lead coming across to the two AC connections. We've got the plus and minus output. I think that's going straight to this capacitor, which is 4.7 microfarad. 400 volt is going straight there. A standard value that you'd typically find um, in a LED lamp. Uh, so that's a 4.7 microfarad. 4.7 microfarads at 400 volts. Um, and then on the negative, look at, oh no, it's the positive. We have a resistor. Uh, which is a value, it's quite a big resistor, 560 ohm. It doesn't really need to be that size, but 560 ohm. Uh, and then it's just going through all the LEDs, I'm guessing. The way we're going to find that out, we're going to measure the voltage and output while it's active, because that will show us roughly what sort of voltage it's seeing across the LEDs. At a wild guess, I would say there's, if they are in series, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 36, say 40 volts? Is it going to be maybe 40 volts across that? It'll vary. When the red LEDs are lit, the voltage will be lower across these LEDs, and when it's green and blue, it'll be higher because uh, they have the different forward voltage. So let's plug this back together. Get a meter in. Plug this in rather precariously. I'll just move this out of the way at the moment. I think that's complete, isn't it? Yes, it is. Definitely not the supply you want in this situation, though. So let's uh, plug this in and measure the voltage going out to the LEDs. So I'm just going to precariously shove that in there while trying to avoid touching the circuits. The voltage across the capacitor will be roughly what's across the LEDs. Let's uh, 
But I'm going to go across the actual output to the LEDs. So, um, is that uh, readable? Yes, it is. So let's uh, probe there. Let's see if I can not blow up in the process. That's not right. Why am I getting that weird? Oh, of course it's out of range. The the derp. Right, okay. Ah, uh, look at that. Is that not roughly what I guessed? Yeah, 40 volts-ish. I'm going dangerously close to live connections here. So yeah, all the LEDs are in series, and that means <clears throat> the easiest way to manufacture that would have been to link all the wires, just to actually bridge all the wires in the, uh, between the LEDs. And that means that if they didn't put enough potting compound in, you could have actually had the tails of those LEDs actually protruding through the compound. Do I feel anything? I don't feel anything in this particular instance, but it's all down to manufacturing quality. So yes, uh, it's, that's why the fish died. Ultimately, it's a mains-derived supply. Something in the water must have made contact with exposed copper in here, either a lead protruding through an air bubble that uh, the resin didn't go right down into to seal the LEDs, or perhaps where this cable goes in, a little strand of copper was, uh, you know, it had just been nicked through the insulation. And that's ultimately caused uh, a voltage gradient in the fish tank that killed all the fish. So if you have one of these with one of these dinky little power supplies, then you may want to, uh, you may want to consider removing it from your fish tank because, uh, well, it depends the value of your fish because um, you don't really want to end up killing them all. So, yeah, that's, that's an interesting little product.